Hello, and welcome to Night Clerk Radio, episode 76. We're talking about the duality of video game music. And Ross is here, and Rosso Caleb is back because we invited him on for his tentacle expertise on the Cryo Chamber episode, but it was an album that didn't really inspire as much discussion as I'd hoped. So we're, we're going we're gonna to do a do-over with two video game soundtracks, one a video game I played too much of for how good it is or not good <laughs> and another video game which i have not played at all but i've heard a lot about uh, warhammer 40k dark tide and signalis i leave it up to you to decide which one i grouped into which category <laughs> yeah both of these games are sci-fi horror but have very different themes uh and gameplay signalis <laughs> is a survival horror game uh, an homage to older style Games like the first couple of Silent Hills and Resident Evil games, and Dark Tide is in the is a co op shooter like Left 4 Dead and many games like that where you and up to three <laughs> friends fight off hordes of mutants and enemies trying to get from point A to point B to kill a boss or whatever. And both of them have very long and very good soundtracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very long. Both are like two hours, yeah. incredibly varied, which we'll get into. But I mm. I do like you know comparing and contrasting one game that is like a survival horror RPG about the the importance of choice and destiny in life. And the other one is like, what if I was a seven foot tall ogre and just shot 300 people a minute? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah, also a game made by two people versus a game made by 2000 people or whatever fat shark yeah. Yeah. made by yeah, the end of subcontracting too. everything. Yeah. And, and the yeah. two people managed to finish their game before releasing it. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true. Yeah. Yeah. It's very true. So Caleb, we have you on, and I've you've mentioned in like pre-episode discussion that you have like a thesis about video game music. Do you want to start with your thesis statement, and then we can like get into the albums, or how would you like to do this? Yeah, sure. Um, so my in comparing these two albums, which is a completely arbitrary comparison, but like that's mm-hmm. how a lot of discoveries are made with completely arbitrary. What if I eat this bread mold? Hey, it's good. Mm-hmm. I think when you compare the two albums together, they're both very good video game albums technically in the same genre of storytelling if not video game and they both arrive at being very good by like completely different routes and i think that is the interesting part of comparing jesper kid's dark uh tide soundtrack to the uh thousand eyes a little bit more ambient soundtrack of signalis because they are two very different ways around the barn to get to the same place of like, I would listen to this outside of playing this video game, which is pretty rare for me in terms of soundtracks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I think, I think that is a useful point of comparison between the two because they're sort of maximalist, minimalist aesthetics mm. materially how they're made. That's also a difference. Like, you know, Signalis does not have spooky men's choir money. Like Dark Tide <laughs> does that, you know, you got to pay those guys. Most of them are union. So there, there's that. And uh, I think they are both amazing in different ways. So mm-hmm. but they're they're interesting in, in comparing each other. That was my sort of takeaway. Yeah. Sure. And I don't think you should not comparing random stuff. You know, we always had jokes in astronomy that most of astronomy is just plotting two things until you get a straight line. And then that's your result. <laughs> nice. It's like most most important things like your star formation rate and presence of certain elements and they go together in a galaxy there you go yeah so you just you got the straight line of of music analysis i guess yeah they're two aesthetic trajectories that ellipse into the same point which i think is it yeah yeah
So I'm, I'm mostly yeah. going to talk about the Dark Tide one first because it's one that I can both map onto actually playing the game to the soundtrack oh, mm-hmm. and listening to it. Because Dark Tide's not really a soundtrack I remember thinking about or noticing when I was playing mm-hmm. until there are certain levels where you have to get the little servitor skull and then some of the more mm-hmm. synth poppy stuff plays. Like whenever there's like hacking in computers, they always mm-hmm. play the more synth poppy synth wave mm-hmm. stuff. And that's why I noticed it because I was like following the skull around mowing down monsters. I'm like, wait a minute, this music kind of a bop. Like, yeah. why, like, why is this my my hacking music? And then kind of went back into the soundtrack. And it, it does because it it does have stuff where it was almost like I was almost worried that it was going to be like a Mick Gordon Doom ripoff. Mm. But they never quite went the metal route that, that he did. No, thankfully. But, but, but it, man, but like if emotionally it is, though, like at, at the right it the gets points, close. Yeah. Like yeah, I, yeah. that boss music, if I didn't have to do it 15 times. Mm-hmm. That boss music would slap like, you know, like I have yeah. a standing desk. The first time you do that assassination <laughs> mission and that boss music hits, I think it is. I forgot the name of it. Transit Horde. Yes. First time Transit Horde hit that slaps like I was dancing while I was playing and exploding <laughs> dudes heads. It was very fun. But yeah, then you get like transmission commences, which is like this weird spacey would like fit in Jordorowski's Dune level of synth stuff. And yeah, that's the stuff that makes me actually look it up on Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, who did this? And what's cool is that the whole soundtrack is just up on YouTube. Yeah. You go listen to it. Like, it's on Fat Sharks. It's not even pirated. Mm-hmm. It's just on Fat Sharks YouTube. So they know they know they got something people want to listen to. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, I think it's actually not even like an optional like DLC. If you buy the game, like on Steam, at least you get the full soundtrack as like mm-hmm. a separate thing so because i actually looked in to see if i could like buy the album separately but like the album by itself is like 20 bucks as a download and i was like well i already have the game so i don't need this <laughs> but yeah like action games are really soundtracks you don't notice them that much because in action games you're also like the music is competing with the game's audio and like when you're you know shooting a lot of enemies there's a lot of screaming and explosions and gunfire and uh, a lot of players turn down the music because there are audio mm-hmm. cues for certain monsters and so, like, it's at, you put yourself at a disadvantage to listen to the actual music. But I think we should talk a little bit about the composer, Jesper Kidd, because um, he is one of these, like, just legendary composers because he has got a long ass career uh, dating back, like, to the 90s of doing hmm. um, soundtracks, primarily for games. Uh, but, like, he did Borderlands. He's done some of the Assassin's Creed, I believe. He has just done uh yeah his first credit is 1990 and he is working on you know the new assassin's creed valhalla and uh he did vermintide but uh interestingly he's done a couple of movies including one i saw uh a few years ago called uh tombad which is like a indian swedish hindu language period horror film so Hmm. which is a unique horror movie and actually worth watching So it's like Jesper Kidd was like, oh, I recognize that name. And I've listened to some of his other soundtracks before and done some of the hitmans. And what I think what's really great about this soundtrack is that he really gets it shows that he really gets 40K because 40K is like this impossible anachronism of like medieval Catholicism (laughs) and like brutal World War Two industrialism and like mixing the two like musically because you could hear both in terms of the yeah the, the men's choruses and like the organ music and the harpsichord and all these like very old instruments and then like fucking just like uh, industrial and like uh, techno and like synthwave put a theremin stuff, in man. there why not no why one's not? stop yeah it. exactly yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so he mixes in the mysticism and like the industrial like brutality really well so I thought that's that. And there's like, so, yeah, there's such great variation in the tracks. There are tracks that would be perfect for a cryo chamber. You could pick just the ambient tracks and slap it on cryo chamber and be like, oh, yeah, that's a good yeah, cryo chamber album. You know, there's some tracks like uh, Waiting to Strike was actually very meditative, very like lots of layering. And yeah, no, it's it's very good. Yeah, it's really deeply and uh, richly symphonically scored in terms of instrumentation, yeah. like just the sheer variety. Mm-hmm. And I know part of that's having like sci-fi setting of, of 40 K uh, mm-hmm. and where you can do, you know, uh, hardcore synth like warp travelers, just like a Solnesh rave. Like it's very, <laughs> very much could have done that on fruity loops with some better like audio cues and done mm-hmm. that. But like the budget of this is to a level that you also have like real men's choral performances You've got these alto sections that are very heavily like lit- and you said Catholic, like relying on these sort of like 
you know, deeply layered chords in the Alco section that you get in like Messiah performances from local symphonies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what I thought is the genius, because I if if you told me to score 40K that way, I would go that result. But I thought he added that sort of like if you ever seen the Robert Downey um, Sherlock Holmes movies, the Zimmer score there focuses Mm -hmm. very heavily on like what I call skeleton fiddle. Like it, it's oh, yeah. it's badly <laughs> fucking tuned. It's mm-hmm. like fucking hollow. You crank the mid up and you use it primarily like a percussive instrument. And it's mm-hmm. very much like this is the thing you hear as Jack the Ripper is gutting you in an alley by steam yeah. lamp. And mm-hmm. every track starts utilizing that as like the counter yeah. beat to the bass. And I mean, that's when Dark Tide really yeah. fucking slaps for me because mm-hmm. it's like <laughs> and so but it's just like really richly and generously uh, instrumented. And I think that's good because like 40K as a vibe is extra like it's yeah. nothing mm-hmm. but extra. And the game is solely vibe. You think about the lore for two seconds. It starts it breaking no down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and this music is very much about like, I'm going to give you so much. You don't have time to think about it. Just kill like, <laughs> yeah. Or, or just like vibe to your little hacking mini game on the skull. You're poking in the eye to turn on a terraformer or whatever. Like, it is very much music to get you vibing with that moment. And then it's gone. Like, and mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's a very interesting approach to it. It's certainly a resource intensive uh, mm-hmm. approach more than Signalis, but I think it works. Yeah. Except yeah. For, I think it's the best part about Dark Tide. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. no shit. Um, I think a really good example of that is the one of the later tracks, Emperor of Mankind, which is like mm-hmm. the chorus is very majestic, but like. It has those those really harsh strings that Caleb's talking about. And so it's almost like, oh, here's this propaganda song to glorify our God Emperor. And then it's like, but no, this is that's pretty fucking horrifying. Your worship a corpse, uh, you know, that eats a thousand people a day. Like uh, mm-hmm. and so it's like this these two things that cannot resolve themselves. And and that's kind of like played out in the track. So, uh, yeah, skeleton fiddle is a perfect description, by the way. Mm-hmm. I just want to. Oh, thank you. Yes. I didn't want to interrupt you at the time, but it is exactly what you hear. <laughs> all of those period pieces from like that like guy Ritchie era of just like mm-hmm. not like not not really pizzicato but it's like clearly not like well intonated and stuff it's just if they ever yeah. integrate diegetic sound of that into dark tide in a patch or something i will only accept fiddles played by rattlings <laughs> as they do a jig <laughs> like that like it's gotta be that if it's just some dude playing a violin no not allowed mm-hmm. heresy killed by an inquisitor instantly gotta be a little rattling Doing sort of a sea <laughs> shanty guy. dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then just to add on to that, I do want to also emphasize in terms of the variety of the album that it does have like synth wavy stuff too. Like there are like mm-hmm. synth tracks on it too. Like they're not as frequent as the more what you think of as like the industrial 40K Catholic choir stuff that y'all are just talking about. But it does mm-hmm. have so like off world aspects was the song I was talking about at the beginning when I said the servitor bop that got me noticing that there is like a, a soundtrack with some thought. Mm -hmm. And then there's just a, it it tends to be the ones around data, like data transmission and Mm -hmm. transmission commences and that type of stuff does have, brings in more like synth and techno synth wave elements, which I thought was just interesting that they, and I I assume it it works. I assume it's not just like pandering. No, I, I I think the more cryo chamber, um, and we talked about like visual art and stuff and Mm -hmm. like the, the cinematic language of sort of a cryo chamber album that can happen. And sometimes like it's got stuff like that too. That isn't necessarily slap. So like, I think like drop ship to hive tertium, this revving bass over what is essentially like a klaxon of your drop ship landing. Like it mm-hmm. sounds like something you listen to while you're strapping on guns. Like, and, uh, but it is also like meditative and dreadful. Like it gets <laughs> more chaotic, the closer you get to the song ending, which is also a vibe you want for dark tide as a game. Like, yeah, I think it, it does a lot of interesting thing. I think it's very much being led by the vibe and 40 K mm. is more than just murder vibes. So there's like big, creepy, <laughs> empty space vibes. Uh, and I think it is dedicated to that and portraying that audio landscape in the same way. Like the art is so focused in dark tide on portraying the like raw scale and, um, awe inspiring proportions of Mm -hmm. the visuals you're seeing. Uh, I think it's very much led by that very visual design in a way. Signalis is not. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think 40K, like, they, it's not all action nonstop because they have to show you, like, these quiet moments. I mean, if nothing else for the story to be like, why would someone, like, betray humanity and, and start serving or worshiping the chaos gods? It's like, oh, it's because they live here in this awful hellscape, <laughs> you know? And so it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. no, that makes sense. I would, I, would, I would also embrace Nurgle if I was a factory worker in this city because it's so god. At yeah. least you have community. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so you got to have that contrast. Yeah. I, I was a bit surprised when I first started playing the game that there was, like, so much, like, well, there were, there was noticeable synth wave into it. Um, that was, I was expecting a more traditional orchestral kind of thing, but like, I, I mean, I, well, I like it. I mean, I like the little EDM kind of tracks, little hacking tracks like Burke was talking about. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. it, but again, extra, you get both. Like there's a ton mm-hmm. of like real <laughs> timpani samples on here. Like they, they mm-hmm. got, they got full orchestras and things like that to record things. But you also yeah. get like kicking sync grave, which most video games is going to be like, wait, you can do this on a keyboard and I'm also paying for studio time. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fuck you. No, you're not. <laughs> and uh, Fat Shark said, no, no, go for it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think if I had like a byline as my my last point on this album, it would just be that it's perfect gym music. Absolutely. Something we don't talk much about on this show, but it is absolutely it yeah. is perfect music to lift. <laughs> Personal <laughs> best today, is. listening to the dark time theme in preparation hey, for the episode. Yeah. Ready to purge some heretics. All right. right. That's <laughs> right. For the emperor. So I think we should move to discussing Signalis, which is a game I want to play, but have not yet. Cause I just don't really sit down and play games anymore, unfortunately. In the yeah, same. that's fair. So I know Ross, you kind of had an opening talk about it as a survival horror game. And I listened mm-hmm. to you and Bridget talk about it a lot on, mm-hmm. on RPPR, but can you just sort of like, cause it feels like a game that has more like thematic, <laughs> not hard, not a, not a high bar, but it's more like thematic character narrative driven than dark tide. So can you talk a little bit about it? Yeah. Maybe without being too spoilery, but just kind of like the general, just, yeah, it's, it's a game of emptiness and loneliness, uh, more than anything else. Uh, that's um, perfect you, for the show. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's very <laughs> haunted. It's, it, it's an extremely haunted game. Uh, and so the music is very haunted as well. Yeah, haunted by not just like, you know, supernatural entities, but also like your own past memories. Mm. You play an Android looking for a human and, and um, that you care about. And uh, you go to this remote mining colony on a distant planet. Uh, it's set in the far future where there are, are uh, the government is uses androids to as the main workforce. There are humans as well. And it's not like a very nice government, but the gameplay is sort of like a top down like pixel graphics, like ret- we would call them retro graphics. They, they, they're they reminiscent of like early 2000 games, like the first two Silent Hills and the first couple of Resident Evils. And uh, you have very limited resources and you have to solve puzzles and bypass these you know, other like infected androids. These other these and you can fight them off, but they they can get back up sometimes. And so you never have enough resources. It's survival horror. You never have enough resources to deal with all your problems. So you have to like you can't kill everything. You you just have to like survive. You have to manage your resources. As the game goes on, you you find out more about the history of like you and this human and the people in this colony and like what happened here. Obviously, everyone's dead or infected and, and is a violent, unstable like monster trying to kill you, mm-hmm. except for a few people. And so you're trying to unravel this mystery as you're going further and further down into this mining colony. And I don't feel like that really spoils anything, but like no. yeah, thematically, it's very it has a lot of references and homages to things like Silent Hill and uh, also other things like Neon Genesis Evangelion a little bit. But like 
Yeah, it's it's like sci fi about but it's also like a haunted house and it's also about a tale about love and loss like more than anything else. Yeah, it does sound like something I'd be into because mm-hmm. like the some of my favorite thematic stuff, you know, like you talk about Ava and just like I know his works in general and stuff. Mm-hmm. Lynch or whatever, like the slipperiness of identity and like constructing identity and memory and like oh yeah, what that, what that so really much means of that in stuff. this game. Yeah, so I, I think it's a game I'd like. I just haven't had a chance to play it, but I, I do like the soundtrack. And when you said it was made by two people, I went to check to see if the composer names "A Thousand Eyes" and "Cicada Sirens" were pseudonyms for those two people. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this is like a Toby Fox type situation of like well, you know, there's there's two people who did the soundtrack, as you mentioned, "A Thousand Eyes" and "Cicada yeah. Sirens," and then uh, Rose engine i think is the name of the two there's two developers who made yeah them. barbara whitman yeah. and yuri stern are the yeah. developers i just didn't know if that mapped on two thousand eyes and cicada sirens if that was like pseudonyms or i don't think so i think they're they're separate yeah, I didn't so there's so, two yeah. pairs there's tech so yeah yeah um, i was wondering yeah. yeah yeah uh they also uh the game uses the conet project uh which i know we've mentioned before but the mm-hmm. uh, they sample these number station recordings um in fact I try to look up like, oh, what's the main title music for the game when you start up the game? And no, it's just Kona. It's just number station recordings. <laughs> they don't have any like the main theme does not play when you start up the game. It's just like a creepy voice on a radio saying weird, not you say numbers like that's. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but this is a very much like a lo fi kind of game. Like I said, pixel graphics. Uh, it's very much about, you know, distortion losing date data uh, uh getting corrupted and so like things breaking down you know the pull mm-hmm. of entropy on us all it's a quiet reflective game rather than i mean punctuated by you know horror oh god the yeah. murder yeah murder <laughs> cyborg trying to murder me you know yeah and i i think that in general maps on well to the soundtrack from my listening to it this week which is the soundtrack itself is more lo-fi mm-hmm. it does not have the extravagant bombastic production of dark tide which also you know makes sense for the game, mm-hmm. and it did feel more like a survival horror soundtrack, whatever that means. Notably, the piano room save room music yeah. is like mm-hmm. one thing I always associate strongly with survival horror. You know that came up in our episode with Bridget and everything of just that sort of duality in survival horror soundtrack. Yeah, drop the clutch out of the tone whenever you get into the yeah. save room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. For me, this one represents the story more. Having played Signalis myself, far more than Dark Tide, because a Dark Tide can barely be said to have a story. <laughs> but B Signalis, and again, I'm I'm gonna try not to spoil along with you guys, but I will do something that if you've played video games before, you should have had the media literacy to pick up on. I right know the second mm-hmm. you treat as written and existent in the fictional world of the video game. The mechanic of having multiple lives for a character, like the second you realize that the Mario that fell down the wrong pipe and died was as real as Mm. the Mario that made it, Um, it instantly (laughs) becomes existentially nightmarish. And when you Mm -hmm. have a sci fi setting, you can really ramp that up to a million. Um, And I will say that Signalis is going to do this like many video games have done before it. But what I find interesting about Signalis is that I think many of them, more so than any of those other representations about like, the authenticity of memory and the counterfeit nature of identity itself and uh, ways that that can sort of um, uh, hollow out experiences and ways that that can sort of enrich experiences. And I think all of that is represented in this uh, soundtrack, like far more subtext become text than anything else I've seen uh, do it before. So for instance, um, the disintegration loops, Something mm-hmm. often referenced on this podcast and, and one of my favorite albums by William Bazinski. Oh, yeah. Who has also produced the album 92982, which is a radio frequency you tune into to get clues in Signalis the game. Like, mm-hmm. uh, and so now we're mm. bringing, yeah. So the, the idea of the identity of the song is a loop of, in many cases, arpeggios. Uh, which could be the entirety of the melody of multiple tracks on the Signalis soundtrack and being mm-hmm. trapped in the disintegrating repetition of those arpeggios is uh, a thematic uh, hammer on the nail of the theme of this game. <laughs> Just like, do you get it yet? Like it's about <laughs> decaying in repetition. Like you have songs that are just German for eternal return like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, it is it is thematically hitting very complex philosophical things touched on by the plot of Signalis. 
And it's representing that in the soundtrack in a way that like Dark Tide is not even uh, concerning itself with, uh, which is what I found. <laughs> Don't even know. Ex- <laughs> yeah, which is what I found very interesting as like these two paths to albums I both like. Yeah. Yeah. No, my Ogren and Dark Tide definitely doesn't even know he has an identity to question. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah, like Dark Tide is like, we have to make a live service that gets profits through microtransactions as well as initial purchases. Mm-hmm. And uh, we need to make our quarterly profits. And this is like, like four people got together. It's like, let's make a really fucked up story. And like, that's it. Like, let's make it about this person, this little person. And uh, some bad things are going to happen to them. Mm-hmm. But it's going to feel good. Yeah, God. It yeah. it also does like when it does do vibe bass, it approaches them from like really opposite aesthetics. So like the boss music in Dark Tide slaps. Like I would listen to that at the club. Like that it mm-hmm. it makes me excited to go see the boss. Like he's my friend. <laughs> the boss and enemy music in Signalis is so jarring. <laughs> Oh, yeah. like mm-hmm. awful and discordant i just like i want to kill it to make it stop <laughs> like yeah yeah it's like, what does your character think of when they encounter the boss and it's like i i put my my notes for one of the boss tracks was like buckle up fucko it's time for a boss fight dot mp3 like yeah no it's it's yeah. not good <laughs> it's it's yeah very i mean it's good but it's yeah intense having not played the game i'm not sure but it probably fits well with maybe any like tonal revelations or changes in the game. But I do feel that these shifts in uh, Signalis are much more jarring. As I think Caleb and I just made the point that I was actually kind of prepping in my head is that I do feel like when Signalis shifts directions, it's much more noticeable. Mm. Like Dark Tide is kind of, even though it has this huge range that we talked about, it still all mm. kind of flows. And Signalis has tracks that just come out of nowhere. They're not bad. It's just like you have kind of eight languid lo-fi Mm-hmm. moody tracks and then one that the first one i really noticed being jarring to me was riot control oh yeah the riot cop is gonna get me <laughs> please, uh, oh, please okay, save yeah. me yeah 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 that's that's and what i, I, I felt that. like yeah yeah was much more like dissonant and aggressive and mm-hmm. much much less chill than everything before and after so so there are moments like that that stand out mm-hmm. which almost makes me want to do like a curated version of this soundtrack that is all of just like the lo-fi ambient. Mm-hmm. Oh, there are many on the uh, stuff. There, there are many online already of people being like I'm sure people Signalis, have. no, no enemy music. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, mm-hmm. Or relaxing music mix. Yeah. Like the, just the hour of like uh, all the safe room and the causal loop and mm-hmm. all these other nice, you know, yeah, you have like bodies, which seems jarring, but it could be like Evangelist track. Like it's just, yeah, very kind of peaceful, mm-hmm. lo-fi, fly through the Blade Runner city and chill. But then you'll hit Incinerator, and it'll be like, what oh, if, boy, yeah, yeah, what if I stabbed <laughs> you in the ear with a malfunctioning walkie-talkie? Like, yeah, <laughs> I think obvious and a very conscious choice that they make these jarring shifts in the in the soundtrack because that's, I mean, a lot of signals is like having the rug pulled out from you at certain key moments in the story is just like, you think the game's going this way and then ha ha it's this it's we're doing this now. Um, and so, yeah, I think, I mean, I think in both cases, like, you know, dark tide is more of a unified experience uh, as they gently guide, well, you know, guide you from one track to the other. And this one is like, no, you're lost and you don't know what the fuck's going on. And that's the whole point. Sometimes you can chill out and sometimes the riot cop is coming to get you. And it works, but yeah, there, there, you do definitely need like, you can't just listen to this album all entirely, you know, with the track list and not like feel if you wanted like a unified experience. Cause like the first time I tried to listen to the soundtrack, I was like, ah, oh, this is good. It's like, oh God, uh, this is, oh God. You know, like it just, <laughs> just unsettles you. I kind of mm-hmm. like writing to it. It's like its own Pomodoro technique. You start to like pay, <laughs> not pay attention <laughs> and yeah. like folk. And then so like, yeah. Like you're like, oh god, yeah. <laughs> that has to. Oh boy, somebody's gonna steal this. I'm gonna say it online in there. That that has to be like a billion dollar app idea, right? Of like <laughs> video game music, Pomodoro app or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I mean there are some tracks that kind of take a middle ground. Like I feel like uh, some of them felt to me like like a Nine Inch Nails like industrial track, not like full like track forty one mm-hmm. Road Wave and. Kind of just like almost reminded me like the Quake One soundtrack where it's like this pulsing industrial like yeah. sound without going full out boss fight, you know. 
Exactly. And I do think those ambient tracks are probably where these two games intersect mm-hmm. soundtrack wise. I think that like they, they both meet in the industrial middle. That's the, mm-hmm. the overlap of the Venn diagram between these two. <laughs> I also found it interesting to look to see which of the two artists did which tracks. And, you know, at first I thought, oh, well, obviously, you know, let's see here, like a, th- a cicada siren, uh, cicada sirens was doing this ambient tracks and thousand eyes was doing like the boss fight and the industrial stuff, but no, like they vary it up. They both do like some of each. Uh, so they're both very talented people. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't find a seam. It, like mm-hmm. I couldn't listen to a song. We're like, Oh, that's one or the other. Mm-hmm. I do know Cicada side, uh, sirens is already working on another survival horror game, or at least a couple. The one I, I saw was, uh, Dumata, which is an upcoming game on steam. And they've already posted like their soundtrack, uh, or the saver music for Nomada, which is another like go into this abandoned building and like figure out what happened to all the people. Also, there's weird tentacles on monsters and stuff, but it has a save room. So you're fine. You know, <laughs> so they know what they like. I love yeah. that the save room is like the closest our area in history is going to get to like the formalism of like chamber music or like, like, <laughs> like it's like a rondelle. Like every composer's expected to have one just to show you can do it. Like you got it. Mm-hmm. They have mm-hmm. like formal conventions. Like that's, that's weird. Cause like prelude last, and Smith Corona. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like last night I, I, after I was listening to the soundtrack, I, I just saw nocturnes. I, I put, I, I started playing as like a John field mm-hmm. nocturnes and he, John field is a compo- Irish composer who, I did a Wikipedia dive and he's like, oh, he's the one who created this whole genre, this form of music called, yeah, about, you know, the peacefulness of night. And it's like very nice mm-hmm. classical music about this very, you know, like tranquil. And it's like, oh, yeah, that's the savor music of the 19th century. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it's kind of funny how much of that stuff just uh, musically has kind of been forgotten that it, it is heavily formalized of like what technically is a fugue. Like we mm-hmm. just say a fugue, but it's actually like strict rules about repeating phrases and across voicings and oh yeah and stuff well, yeah, so. the nocturne thing for uh, on wikipedia is like hey this is what a nocturne is all about it's like that's a lot of music terms i don't know but i man <laughs> we used yeah. to we used to live in a society there's a world where we could be beating each other to death in the streets of paris with canes over formless <laughs> arguments <laughs> as to what qualifies savor of music but instead, it's got no piano, Red <laughs> yeah, Instead, we're here. Instead of beefing through the streets with our expatriate buddies, it, drunk on absinthe. The track is too yeah. high fidelity. It must have a lo fi crackle to it. It must evoke anachronistic recording technology, you fool. So, yeah. who's going to be like the Stravinsky of the Savior in music then? Like, <laughs> riots. Or, uh, <laughs> women fainting. Yeah. <laughs> God, now I kind of want to do like a, a write a, a comedy or something about like composers all trying to make the ultimate savor of music. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah a, a deep foot. the history yeah. of the savor of music. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So, kind of one last little interesting, un, not really a musical point, but like a data audience point. It's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. So, both of these soundtracks are posted on YouTube in their entirety by their respective developers. And they're properly chaptered out so that each each track is properly a chapter in, in YouTube and everything. Mm-hmm. And this enables you to look at kind of stuff. So like, at least for me in Chrome, if I'm watching the video and I mouse over the time bar, like oh, the scrubber, yeah. it brings up a, um, there's like a histogram, which I think is roughly related to like watch density. Like yeah. how many people watch like that? Like, And it'll tell you, it'll highlight parts that are like most replayed and stuff. And in the context of an album, it's kind of interesting, especially one so long and varied, what tracks people zero in on. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting. I don't know where I'm going with this because I just discovered it. Oh, no, I've seen uh, a number of left tubers like mention in the text of video essays, like when they know people are going to stop watching because they've been Mm -hmm. studying the metric of that sort of history. Well, like I had never thought about like what that means for an album. When you post it mm-hmm. to YouTube until you just said that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and those sorts of metrics have always been available creator side. So like this all gets posted on YouTube and I can go look at like average watch mm-hmm. time who, who stops watching at certain times or comes mm-hmm. back and by demographics and everything. But since this is like consumer side data, there's sort of an implication there for then if you're lazy, you might just go to the parts that are already flagged as most replayed. Mm-hmm. So like it does impact the consumption, but that's not really the point here is I was just noticed that the ones 
or Dark Tide that are the most popular are the like Imperial. So the Imperial Advance is like the second, which is the very driving coral, big bombastic organs. And then the Imperium mix of disposal unit, which is like a IDM remix of disposal mm-hmm. unit towards the end. Disposal unit rocks. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but on Signalis, the two most are, um, I'm not going to butcher the German, but it's Emptiness by a Thousand Eyes. Oh, so mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're both great tracks. I'm not disagreeing, but it's just interesting that for those, it's both of like somber, moody piano pieces are the two most yeah. for those. And for Dark Tide, I, it's like the bump. Where's yeah, I Missed sorry. You at? Is I Missed You on there? I imagine that's it. I, I really like that one. Let's see. What track number is that? Uh, I have to go by time code, unfortunately, not just track. Sorry. Yeah, I was just curious. But yeah, like that's my other favorite along with uh, Emptiness, the or De Totenstiel or whatever it is in the German. Yeah. Yeah. 3,000 cycles. Okay, yeah, 109. Yeah. Uh, it's actually kind of spiking right up because it's right after yeah. uh, Emptiness. Mm. So, like, there, the people listen for a couple tracks before uh, it level. Yeah, flattens it seems out. like a yeah. kind of ramps up and then back down. Well, I, everyone, everyone I, else is wrong. That's my favorite. One thing that is also you see on YouTube uh, for a lot of popular tracks from soundtracks is this track looped for like 15 or 30 minutes. And I know like emptiness Mm -hmm. is one of those. And so like people will put that on and just like listen to the same song for 30 minutes, even though there's you could just YouTube has a looping feature. You can just set it to loop. (laughs) Okay, I get that. And again, without too many spoilers, though, once you've played Signalis and you know the song is from Signalis, when you put Mm -hmm. it on a 30 minute loop, like that's just like a recipe for an anxiety attack for me. Like, (laughs) hey, I really want to have an existential crisis. Is there some sort of auditory way to ensure that happens? Like, because that Mm -hmm. would that would do that to me. (laughs) Well, it's for several tracks, like not just that one. But yeah, yeah, no, it's Mm -hmm. it's wild that people do that. But they love and that's yeah. <laughs> this gonna be a whole other discussion maybe not the best thing to bring up at the end of the episode because i think there's a whole other independent of these soundtracks discussions about like the effect of consumer side data on oh, yeah, consumption yeah. and like oh yeah production side is already so algorithmically controlled mm-hmm. that to then be like well let's also pass this on to the other side man that's just i feel like that's just asking for an ouroboros of mm-hmm. disaster no no that's for sure it would be Real interesting to see yeah, how those histograms and um, other, you know, the algorithm uh, uh, shifts viewing habits, you know, like has YouTube shorts and TikTok changed, you know, music listening. Habits. Mm-hmm. That's right. Oh, God, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, something to think about. <laughs> it's above my pay grade. You've already exhausted your That's right. very uh, expensive yeah. hour with me. So That's true. <laughs> it's ridiculous, Damn. quite frankly. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just say. Don't let some machinic algorithmic consciousness tell you what to listen to. Let our human organic consciousnesses tell you what to listen to. Yeah. And that's Dark Tide and Signalis. <laughs> So thank you so much for listening. Thanks for joining us on the hour discussion of four hours of music that we've hopefully condensed down to its its key themes. Next episode, we're going to be getting it back into Dungeon Synth. Ross and I have identified a, an interesting Boston music label that that pumps out. Well, pumps out sounds derogatory, but they make Dungeon Synth <laughs> and is very good. And we're going to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Before we get into all of our call to actions, Caleb, how can people connect with you? Uh, yeah, I design games uh, for Arc Dream Publishing's Delta Green RPG at patreon.com backslash DGDC. And I also make my own games. I'm currently working on the second edition of Red Markets. Uh, and if you want to mm-hmm. check the progress of that, you can find me at patreon.com backslash HGOD. All good stuff worth checking out. If you like what we do and you want to hear more of it, we do have a Patreon at Nightclerk Radio at patreon.com. We have two years worth of bonus episodes now, one of which also features Caleb talking about stuff I don't remember because everything's a blur now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Quite frankly. 
<laughs> no offense to anybody. Um, and like, you know, some essays and there's going to be some other stuff that we're going to be working on hopefully at some point. You can also find us at Nightclerk Radio pretty much anywhere, nightclerkradio.com, at Nightclerk Radio on Twitter. I'm at Burke McBurkinson. Ross is at Ross Payton. We're also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, et cetera. Wherever you find your podcast, you can probably find us there. And wherever you do choose to consume our content, as I hate to say, just take a moment to let that machine at consciousness boost us up on the histogram. Let it know that you like what we do and tell us exactly which parts you like that we do so we can just repeat them ad mm-hmm. nauseum until we become annoying and then you go find somebody else to consume. Oh, no. <laughs> Entropy. No. It's the it's the algorithm creator cycle. I'm sorry. The best part I'm about an Ouroboros is once you're inside, you don't have to ask for it. It just keeps coming. That's true. Yeah. It just keeps coming. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Keeps on happening. <laughs> But until that implosion occurs, thank you so much for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.